Hello everybody, this is Demetra K, and I'm sitting here with Donovan throwing rocks and hiding his hands to feet. And this is the second edition of Don't Believe the Hype, where we want to highlight different stories that are trending, some um, that are not trending, and ask you to think for yourself and not just believing the headlines or what's on top, we're asking you to dig deeper here. And so I want to get right into it. I don't know if um, any of you guys have um, heard about the story. Well, this story actually took place about 20 years ago or so in Las Vegas. It is the story of Sharice Iverson. Rochelle Richards with the Las Vegas Review Journal. Here's your news update for your Sunday morning. A seven-year-old girl's murder at a prim casino still haunts 20 years later. Jeremy Strohmeyer lured seven-year-old Sharice Iverson into a bathroom where he sexually assaulted and slowly strangled her before snapping her neck. The case started a national conversation on casino security and if casinos should provide child care. Strohmeyer is serving a life sentence without the possibility of parole. A witness of the crime never intervened or reported what he saw. An action wasn't considered illegal at the time, so Strohmeyer's best friend David Cash was never charged. In 1999, the Sharice Iverson bill went into effect, requiring Nevadans to notify police if they see violent acts being committed against a child. She was a little seven-year-old girl who was on vacation with her family in um, a Las Vegas hotel when she came up missing. They were looking all over for her, and when they finally found her, they found her lifeless body in um, a bathroom stall. What happened to her was a mystery for a, uh, for a minute. Then they um, looked at the surveillance cameras and they saw um, a young man, he appeared to be a young white man, leaving the bathroom, the, the women's bathroom. I believe it was a women's bathroom. It might have been a men's restroom. So, saw him leaving. They put two and two together and what happened was he snatched her into the bathroom, raped and choked her to death. Um, uh, brutally raped and choked her to death in this bathroom stall. And so when he was sentenced, um, instead of giving him the death penalty, they gave him four life sentences to run consecutively. So basically he wasn't getting out. And at the time, he was, uh, I think he was 17, maybe 18, a senior is what he was, a senior in high school. And so now he's seeking parole under the argument that when he was sentenced, he was immature. This is Leroy Iverson. Sharice Iverson's father, um, voluntary statement to police. And that's when I went and got the lady. The lady, I asked, you seen my daughter? We tried to survive her and she, she had a trauma on her lip. All her clothes were pulled off into the toilet, except her little shirt. I'm gonna skip that, that's really graphic, okay. But I couldn't get no pulse with her hand or nothing. I couldn't hear, I couldn't hear her breathing or nothing. She was dead then. They had raped her, you can tell. Or he's, or he's trying to say I'm a minor. Well, he wasn't a minor. Right. He was, because he was a senior, but he was 18. So technically okay. he wasn't a, a minor, but he was saying, I was, I immature. was, a, I was mm -hmm. immature then. What was I thinking? I didn't know. And plus he was saying too, um, there was some coercion going on from the DA. His lawyers misled him. So that's what his appeal is on. Him being immature, his lawyer um, didn't represent him right, and then some other factors. And so. A judge will ultimately decide on that in the next three months whether he'll be paroled. Parole meaning he gets out. Again, he's serving a four-term life sentence. And so I guess to me the question is, will he get out? Because in the last couple of months we've seen plenty of, uh, I'd say white offenders especially, do the most heinous things to people and get no jail time or three months or right. something like that. Comparative to the average Joe right. Six type black person, Mexican, where we get life. And, and they jaywalk and right. get life, mm -hmm. you know, or whatever. Because now, obviously, I'm being facetious, but in comparison, that's kind of what it is. Um, I can't remember the guy. Um, he's a white kid as well. He, uh, gosh, he raped. I can't remember who it was. He, he, raped, he raped a student that was drunk or something. Okay. And I believe she was black and well, if I'm not mistaken. But the judge said, well, I don't want to ruin his life. Yeah, okay, that was at a college uh, yeah. thing up in Stanford so, or one yes, of those ones. Yes, yes. Right. The judge didn't want to ruin his life because he's young. And he's from he's a young, fluent community. And he's from an affluent community mm -hmm. and all these other things. And so 
Um, he only served, ended up serving three months. Right, and a black guy did this, you know, similar thing. Same he was an athlete. Yeah. And they gave him like eight years or something. And I think the one you're talking about as far as the athlete is the one that was actually falsely accused. Right. And he did like 10 years or mm -hmm. something like that. And yeah. the girl, like they, uh, they tricked her, I guess, uh, yeah. set, set her up rather. And she confessed that she was lying. Yeah. So... And of course, the guy's life is ruined. So right, because he was no supposed to get a big full uh, full scholarship right. and all that other stuff. Mm -hmm. It didn't work out for him, but so yeah, we have what we call these unfair sentencing. And I'm saying this: I don't think he should get out. I think he should serve every moment of that sentence. All if he lives for a lifetime, I think he should serve for a lifetime because I don't care how immature you deem yourself to be. I know a lot of a immature people. Right. Yeah, but I don't know of anybody who is out there raping and choking to death. Children. Children in a public venue on top mm -hmm. of that. So it's like, that was very bold. And then uh, the uh, prosecutor actually was saying, this guy should never get out. Right. And the investigators, because they're saying when he was telling the story, it, just the way he was telling it was so heinous and so... It was so, so heinous and like, what's the big deal? Yeah. These people are subhuman. Right. Kind of sounds like what uh, President Trump is kind of saying when you, you know, you dehumanize a group of people. Exactly. Right. And so that's what frightens me as to why he'll get out. Oh, he's already served 21 years. He served enough time. He was immature at the time. Almost like the um, Michael... Skagel, 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 the, the, right. um, the yeah, Kennedy killers, right. Mm -hmm. He raped and murdered, he, he raped and murdered um, some a girl in the neighborhood, a 15-year-old, and did he get out? He did get out. Yeah, and they were, you know... He, well, at the time, matter of fact, they didn't even charge him at the time. It was 30 right. years later, and then I think they did finally, did convict him. Right. Way but, after the fact. But the, then, so, like, everybody rallied to get him out, and, but it was... You know, and not it's really a fluid person. person that he did it. Right. Yeah. And it's a fluid person. It's and it's it's really sad that we are in a society today where black lives basically don't matter. They they, they figure if it was a white person, oh my God, we got to do everything we can, and you know, and like I said, but you see all these brown and black people going to jail at alarming rates. Right. Uh, and then uh, the one case that comes to mind is the one that happened a couple years back, where the very rich boy. He was uh, drinking and driving, and he um, killed the uh, passengers yes. in the car. Yes. And he didn't serve any jail time because he was too rich to right. go to jail. And that's right. what the term really defense. A flu affluenza, affluenza started defense. to flow right. around. And then his mother, uh, uh, they put him on house arrest because he had broke whatever yeah. the rules were. Then the mother went on the run with him. Right. I mean, it's just, it's just. And yet it was like. Right. But you killed people, and and but he didn't kill white people. It was there were people brown, people yeah, they were, yeah, right. people of color. So. so yeah, so that's that's what I'm afraid. I'm afraid that because she was a little black girl, and this is a white man. He's now 39, I think he is. Mm -hmm. now. He's 39. Serve his debt to society, so they'll say. But and he should be. But that's society, okay? This is why I'm against the death penalty. Mm -hmm. Okay, I believe. Um, as a democracy or whatever, when you when you give the government in a democracy the very power to kill the people who give the government the power, right? That's insane in itself. However, uh, killing somebody—it's almost like the government needs to get out of the revenge business. Cause that's all it is. Eye for an eye. Yeah, you, you're you're not going to bring that loved one back. Put that person in jail for the rest of their lives where right. they can't enjoy going boating and all this other stuff. Put them in jail, and, and let's make it a real jail, people. In Japan, their their, oh, recis <laughs> their recisionism rate of returning prisoners mm -hmm. is one percent or less. Well, because don't they have those really small sales? You have a hole where your shitter is. There's no, uh, you know, thing in the window. I mean, you don't want to go back to Japanese yeah, I mean, jail. I would be cool. Be like, this, I don't want to be no crime. Right. Turkey, yeah. same thing. If your family doesn't support you, you ain't eating. You ain't getting the things you need. It's as simple as that. So the crime rate is very low. Very, very low in Japan. And that's true, like you said, as far as the recidivism rate here in uh, the United States, it's very high. Mm -hmm. Well, for one, because the way the system is set, set up, up. Because they, they make money off of us. That, so. But then when they get out, they're a felon. Right. It's hard to get a job. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, okay, I'm going to go back to crime. Right. And well, I'll go back when you know, I get well, caught. Well, well, the funny thing is you say that now. It, uh, I think that demographic is kind of changing mm -hmm. because with all these warehouses and logistics and Amazon that has destroyed this country, right. you can go to a felon 
and say, okay, you ain't got no other choice but to work here at seven, nine dollars an hour. Yeah, because a lot of those places are um, starting to be family friendly again. Yes. When the economy got bad, mm -hmm. then they started saying, well, yeah, you can't, we can't bring you in here. Right, but now, like I say, you got all these warehouses, and we know people who don't have felons and can't get jobs. Most people don't want to work there, right. so hey, you open up the doors, right. which I'm not mad at the fact that they're able to work, mm -hmm. but. Yeah, and to your point, I mean, in those other countries, they, they decision rate is very low. You right. Get, uh, good example: our, our neighbor Mexico. Who wants to go to a Mexican jail? Yeah, I heard it's it's, it's exactly it's a doozy over there. It's right. Yeah, over here, yeah. Um, my daughter was showing me um, a video of uh, prisoners over here, mm -hmm. and they, I kid you not, I know we can't see it here, mm -hmm. but they had a TV almost as big as yours yes. in this cell, in, in their cell, cell. Mm -hmm. because and they had all the ads on the TV. Yeah. And, they, I'm like, they ain't listen to me. Wait, they was recorded. So where you get your cell phone from? Recorded and uploaded to social media somehow because hey, it was trending. Hey girl, look, I know I, I got child support that I'm not making. It's about I need to put that, that money on my books. <laughs> you know, I want to be comfortable in jail. So girl, you know I love you. Mm -hmm. You know you yeah. gonna get the, with the three hots and the cot. <laughs> you ain't messing but, with me. But that, that's what we start uh, we really need to do is start doing that. But see, like you said, there's a system set up to where they don't want to do that and it, because they make money out of us if we're in jail or out of jail. Right. One way or the other, they're going to make money because oh, the absolutely. prison industrial system, uh, one of Hillary Clinton's biggest uh, boosters was the prison industrial complex. Oh, I mean, she set it up perfectly, didn't she? It's all them super predators. And exactly. And yet, a three black, strikes, her and, and her yet, husband. black women are on this bullshit right now talking about, we're the difference in the elections and we're doing that. But look who you're supporting. We're the difference. Yeah. <laughs> but look who you're supporting. You know, they use the example of the right. Jones election. Yeah. Look who you're supporting in regards to, oh, because she's a woman. Now, don't get me wrong. If you want to support a woman because she's a woman, that's your right. But I think that you should do a little bit more research. I don't support somebody because they are black. As you know, I'm not a Barack Obama supporter. Right. I support him being the first black president and what he tried to do. Because I understood why he was put there. We were in the revolution. The country was in free fall. They said, we got to do something different. Let's put this Negro up here and watch what everybody does. And everybody right. stopped. Because everybody remembers Occupy Wall Street. Yeah. When Obama got elected or uh, nominated, right. all of that stopped. Right. And that's why he was put there. Look at his cabinet. His cabinet was all picked by Wall Street. True. Very true. And he didn't do a damn thing for black people in the eight years. He and it's funny because I was having this conversation with somebody last night mm -hmm. who said, because of a Barack, uh, and this is a black mm -hmm. man, because of Barack Obama, people uh, looked at him differently and they thought how, um, and I'm paraphrasing, but well-mannered and educated sure. he was. And I said, well, who, smooth. Is, I smooth. Said, well, who is they? Right. Who, are, who are they that are looking at you differently mm -hmm. because of Barack Obama? Right. And then he was having a hard time trying to say, I kind of got where he was going. Now white people respect him now as a black man. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, uh, I've never had nobody do that to me. Now I have had white people come up to me and say, or different people, mm -hmm. well, you're very articulate. Mm -hmm. articulate yes. But it didn't have nothing to do with Barack Obama. Yeah. Why aren't you working? Like he was almost trying to say, because of Barack Obama, they know that we ain't all, you know, Animals. low brown Negroes. Right, we're not all from the hood. Right, and I was like, you know, get out of here all that. that. Mm -hmm. But to your other point about Barack Obama, he did, he pardoned people and commuted some sentences. And I had this argument with the same person last night. Um, he said, well, the Barack Obama did do stuff for black people. said so he didn't do nothing for us specifically, Tangible. per se. Tangible. I said, look at all the Black Panthers that are still in, in prison mm -hmm. when it's been debunked that they were guilty, COINTELPRO and all the right. evidence, but yet these people still sit in prison. I said, you still have somebody like Asada Shakur, mm -hmm. who still got a political asylum in Cuba. Mm -hmm. He could have said, you know what? Wipe it all clean. We hear about somebody like Trump. Who's, um, I'll do what I want. That the Souza guy, that right. oh, the, the Obama conspiracy. And, 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 what, and what about that the Souza guy? He admitted to wrongdoing. And you know how many um, people I have, especially my white friends on Facebook, they'll send me his stuff. Oh, you should look at this. I'm yeah. like, come on, like I don't know who that right. is. Right, George Opio, a judge, sanctioned him because he was. Targeting Hispanic yes. people. Yeah, and he was like unapologetic he, about it. In contempt of court. Right. Uh, Trump is actually um, pardoning people who are guilty. Right. And so to tie that into your Sharice Iverson, a little mm -hmm. uh, seven year old that was murdered, um, I think it's Jeremy Strohmeyer, okay. was, was his name. Um, somebody who looks like him will probably parole him. Oh, okay. 
somebody will probably that looks like him will probably parole him. And the other tie-in I wanted to um, bring to this is because today, especially in California, is um, election. It's primary, primary day, and mm -hmm. so we are voting to see who's going to go to the ballot for November. Right. And then so I also put a post on my wall just before we came on here saying, black people, take your beautiful selves to the polls and vote because state and local elections matter. Mm -hmm. That judge who uh, unfairly sentences people of color is going to sit on that bench because you don't vote or he's going to get off of the bench, bench potentially because you do you vote. vote. Mm -hmm. Because his decisions don't primarily affect his, his or people. Her. Right. His or her. His or her. Mm -hmm. Don't primarily affect their people. Their decisions more than likely affect our people. So in your words, when Ray Ray and Pookie mm -hmm. go to the courthouse for something small, dying or a nickel bag of weed, right. that judge may decide, you know what? You need to give me ten years. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But somebody like them come up there, well you know it's a low level offense. You know, it's going to be legal in a couple of years yes, anyway. You know, so I said, like, you know, I smoked weed when I was a kid too. Mm -hmm. Lil' weed never hurt nobody. Right. But so there's a lot of things that we can do as black people to stop that from taking place. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot of people say, well, why should I vote? I get it on the, uh, yeah, so the, the federal uh, That's federal. what they want you to have that attitude. They want right, you to have that right. attitude. Right. But when you go to court mm -hmm. or the sheriff, that, you know, potentially is going to be in office, mm -hmm. the, the, the policies that they back and, and that they, mm -hmm. uh, and that they, um, and our, what do you call it, they mm -hmm. enact, mm -hmm. that affects us. Mm -hmm. The DA, that, I mean, they have a decision whether they want to charge you or not charge mm -hmm. you, overcharge you, right. and, and let it go, and I personally know somebody right now who's going through the court system over something very minute that had Look, no I wasn't going to talk about that. No. I wasn't going to talk about that. That pimping that charge, I was right. not pimping her. Right, right, right. Okay. I wasn't going to talk about it either okay. since you talk, brought it up because that would be our second topic, okay? Right. But I know somebody who was going through the court system over something that was trumped up and is it proved that it was trumped up by, behind somebody, an older white man, using his white privilege to lie mm -hmm. on black young men and they're going through the system. Now, they're not looking at jail time, mm -hmm. but they're looking at getting a misdemeanor. Right, and The some DA fines. wants to stick something. It wants them to pay this man restitution for something they didn't do yeah. to him. Mm -hmm. All because he picked up his phone and lied on them. They have video and everything. The man is a complete liar. But the DA, who I am not voting for. Uh, that would be uh, Mike, Hester. Mike Hester. I'm not voting for because he has this thing where he's tough on crime. And I know under his watch, his regime, his regime, he is trying to do this to this person I am speaking of. Instead of saying there's nothing here, and, it, and so once I was going to court with this individual, it dawned on me. I'm like, how many other people of color came in here and they did what they're trying to do to you? They didn't have anybody who knew the law to help, support, and back them up. They didn't have the other guy's dad, who's a lawyer, to give them the ins and outs, and they just so I say, well, you know what? It's easier that you take the misdemeanor. It's, right. it's not going to harm you. But every time you go get a job or try to get a job, you can't join the it comes up. Mm -hmm. Right. And so that's what. That's why it's important for us to vote because it's those people like that who will have no problem giving your cousin Ray Ray and Pookie and them mm -hmm. charges they don't deserve to mess up their life and to ultimately, to back to Donovan's point will send them to prison eventually because if you don't, you're not going to starve. Right. You're not going to say, and then most of the time, when you have a, a, a record, you can't go get a lot of public assistance. Nope. And so you're out Especially there, as a man. Yeah, especially as a man. Mm -hmm. And so then you're out there doing things you're not supposed to do, and you get caught up, oh, well, I see here, you had a misdemeanor back in the day. Okay, well, you know, because you kind of got a history, we're going to bump it up to a felony, and mm -hmm. now you need to give us some time. So, and, and then it fuels the prison. It's just, I and mean, it's a lifelong system and a situation. And right? it makes money. For those very same DAs and judges and all those other people that we are too lazy to go vote out of exactly. office, they all get their pockets greased by sentencing and over sentencing people of color because we know that the prison system is for profit. Now, I also think about this, and like I said, I know, you know, I know you guys get a lot of your information off watching TV and YouTube. Jerry Springer. Yeah, you know, you know, and, and there's nothing wrong with that. Like I said, right. you're, you're watching our video right now, and. 
I got a lot of information off of seeing different things and getting and formulating right. an idea. You got to remember our the California prison system, the federal prison system is overwhelmed with because, like you said, we're, 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 it's a system yeah, bringing people like, in there. So, yeah. rooms, so, 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 so now they've gone to the private prison industry. Now, with the private pr pr prison industry, our tax dollars are funding that, and there's been several cases of judges who are getting kickbacks from the private prison industry. To send, it was in Pennsylvania where that, that judge was sending kids, ten year old, ten year white old, white kids, and it was an outrage when, it, when they found it. Right, was white kids. ten year old. But I think uh, most of them were, uh, were people of color. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. yeah in the end, but the, the they said this dude made it was what two two million dollars. They finally, or yeah, totally? yeah, they finally removed him off the bench, and his thing. And he, he's doing twenty six years. Right, they removed him to the bench, and uh, he couldn't even say he was sorry. He couldn't even. He was just like. Yeah, I mean, he made uh, two million dollars or so. And think about that. it: who's going to make him give that money back? There was no uh, acclamation to make him give that money back. Right. So his family is now financially secure. But then again, too, you have somebody like Trump. If he feels like he needs to pardon somebody like that, he can well, do it. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I wanted to talk about the Sharice Iverson cases because here, this white boy who took this baby's life in the most heinous way possible even has the audacity to ask to be let go because I was immature. Sure, and I'm white and I'm But you took this baby's life. You didn't go rob a bank. You know, you didn't go do something, you know, where you can say, yeah, two, 21 years, but I think you paid your debt. you don't understand. It was a black girl. Right, but I, that's what I'm saying. So it's probably going to be somebody like uh that looks like him, that's gonna sympathize, because they're the sure. people too. Absolutely. I sympathize with him. You're right. And I think you've done your debt to society. I mean, oh. the, the, the Negroes are killing themselves every day anyway. Right, so, yeah, right. Okay. You, you did. You but know. that all comes from us. Mm -hmm. Too lazy, and I'm not putting the onus all on black people, but, but no, no, you know what? You need to, though. Because but, right. for too long, we've been trying to be nice and not hurt people's feelings. We are hurting ourselves when we don't participate. Period. Right. We because just are. Uh, it affects us predominantly. Nobody's coming to save us. Nobody. And so uh, I saw a friend of mine on Facebook today says that it looks like uh, voter turnout is low. And I thought, oh, well, how oh, unfortunate. It's always that way. True, but it's like, especially way. in this time... We've got a dude in the White House, yeah. and we've had a lot of evil people in the sure. White House, but I don't think we've had anybody as blatantly evil as Donald Trump, and all of his minions mm -hmm. that co-sign everything he, he does, does, regardless if they, at first, they're against it, now, but yeah, voter turnout is Right, low. now, let's, let's make a, a thing here. Don't think because you're a dummy crat that they're not part of the problem either. Look at Dianne Feinstein's record. This woman votes overwhelmingly the Republican agenda. She is a Republican disguised as a dummy. Friend. She's voting her money. Exactly. She's voting what's going to exactly. get her the most money. Exactly. And I was telling my daughter that because mm -hmm. um, we're currently, we still got to go vote, by the way. Mm -hmm. We've just been running around. But we're currently, as we're driving voted. around, um, researching and reading all these candidate statements mm -hmm. and stuff. And They'd love to tell you what they want, what you want to hear. Right. You know, and I'm like, well, we, you know, we got to be careful. And I was telling her that a lot of these people masquerade as, like you said, a Democrat, but they really vote Republican mm -hmm. to follow the money. How is that you follow. go into an office and you're down there broke and now you're a millionaire, right. you know, 10 times over? Right. Um, they're, they're telling you right now. Like I said, the Democrats are great at telling you who your leader is going to be. They're trying to, to gin up this uh, Kamala Harris. When Kamala Harris was here in California as the Attorney General, and there was a couple of uh, racial situations. She sat on her ass and did nothing and about she, it. And Kamala Harris will not get my vote. Okay, right. get my vote. She won't get my vote because she uh, she's a black woman who always touts the issue of DACA Others. and everybody right. else. But black. She never like she loosely talk about black people, mm -hmm. but not just hey. Yes. I All agree right. with Kaepernick. He's right. We need to stop police brutality and the right. injustices against black she, people. And when I take myself to Congress, mm -hmm. I'm going there with a bill saying that we need to get these right. people right. But she don't never talk she like that. She will leave is another one. All she's talking about is DACA. Um, yep. Aunt Maxine. All she's talking about is DACA. Well, and I saw teaching. a video where somebody asked her about um, 
reparations. And then she says, uh, oh, yes, I'm going to go down there and do it. It's like, Wait, you've been there for 30 years. It's taking so long. Yeah, when are you going to do right. it? When are you going to do it? I mean, I don't want to hear that. Now, it seems like every, I'm going to do it election time. I'll do it now. Right. And you know, know people, get, people get mad when you talk about Auntie Maxine. Oh, yeah. I know. I understand that. And it's not but that. I, but I want you to get mad and understand what I just said. Right. She's been there over 30 years. What's taking you so long? To champion reparations. Yeah, I'm there with you. You go know, after Trump, you know, at the right. drop of a hat, you got all these little sound bites. People say, you know, I'm reclaiming my time mm -hmm. and all this That's other all stuff. That's all great, but the proof but is in the what are you actually doing for your people? No. And that was a conversation, sort of heated conversation I had with the guy last night mm -hmm. and saying, you know, uh, Barack Obama, he did things for black people. What? Like he changed the image of black people. Wow. He made um, everybody look at um, black people in a different way. Wait a minute, way. wait a minute. Le uh, LeBron James did that with his girly pants and, and shirt. So he changed the image <laughs> of black people too. So what I'm saying is that that's insignificant in the uh, Well, the like I told you, I said everybody else goes to office and they um, root for their people. Mm -hmm. I said, but you know, Obama, when he was there, his administration wrote a check to the Jews. Indians, Asians. everybody, mm -hmm. but black people, and right. I'm thinking, okay, and, you 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 you're known as the first black president. Yeah, your mom is white, but mm -hmm. no, you black to us. Right. You don't think we need no money? Right. And the sad thing is, he's coming out of Chirac. That should have been the first thing on his agenda about pumping right. money he, into. He got fixing. a lot of heat for that too, because mm -hmm. he, for the most part, not me making this up, but for the most part, he neglected Chicago. No. He sent his boy. And I, I, know he, I know he didn't send him, right, like, but, but he's, he was behind them to Chicago and cut all those inner city schools, close, yeah, them, down, close them down, take all this money. The, it's, the taxes are high. I mean, it's just like it made it worse, but this was your dude. Right. right. You sent him back to Chicago to make it harder for the people who sent you guys to the White House. But again, at the end of the day, though, I blame you because you're so disenfranchised, I don't want to take participate. I don't want to, you're making it worse for yourself. Right. You have to, you're right. The local elections, uh, I'm sorry, the national elections for president, that don't matter. Right. You don't have to worry about that. Whatever. That's not important. I, so I'm with you on that. Right. It don't matter because, again, popular vote, Hillary won by 4 million votes. So if we were in a real democracy, she would, have she would be president. Right. But we're not in a real democracy. What matters is the local election. And you should be voting and taking uh, participating in your community. If you don't like the way your streets are, you should be going to city council meetings. You know, and, and participating. You, well, what's I, a city council meeting? It's a meeting where the people who uh, make decisions for your city, the so you if they put liquor stores in my neighborhood, is it the city council? It's the city council that they, makes the decision they, through the planning commission uh, and all these different things that are basically you. Your so basically, I shouldn't just be complaining. I'll be complaining when I see them building the dollar stores and the pawn shops right. and liquor the stores cents in my stores. neighborhood. I should get up and go be active and let them know. Or go down to City Hall. You don't have to wait for the uh, city uh, meeting. You can just go down to City Hall and, hey, I want to talk to my representative, blah, blah, blah. Email a letter. There's so or many maybe you take your, a group of people with you yes. from the neighborhood and say, okay, well, if you guys are deciding to let whoever build a liquor store for the 10th time I'm on a strip club over here. <laughs> in our neighborhood, me and these people and other people are going to make sure they don't get one of Done. dime of our money. Exactly. So you guys might want to ask those people who are never, are never black people mm -hmm. to go put their that liquor store or that thing that we don't need anymore of in their neighborhood because mm -hmm. we're not, um, we're going to shut them down. We're not giving right, them no money. Uh, right now in Reno Valley, uh, in, on the east side of our city, um, there was a liquor store going to be put up in the affluent side of the oh, city. Oh, I know they shut that down. And they sure did. They sure did. They what went to that? city council over there in Edgemont. You bring yes. in Edgemont, you know. And I just said we don't have much in Edgemont. I mean, people dog bars, but you know, we have my nice store a couple blocks over. But um, it could be done. And uh, I used to be just like a lot of people out there, like it don't matter, whatever. But you know what? Without even being on city council, I advocated and got street repairs done in my neighborhood. I got a crosswalk thing. My next project is to get a bathroom in our uh, park over here. I'm tired of seeing little Mexican kids defecating uh, in the park because they have nowhere to go. Well, that's pretty disgusting. It is disgusting, but I have to say it straight because that's exactly what's happening. And you should be disgusted and you should be helping me get a bathroom uh, for a park that was named for the very first African-American female soldier in Absolutely. the city of Marino Valley. Absolutely. 
And that's the thing, another thing I think we don't realize as black people. We have that. I don't care what kind of job you got, you paying taxes. Yes. You are paying for the salary of the people who are making decisions that adversely affect, affect you. you. So why not get your money's worth? Exactly. Why not say, well, hell, I'm paying for something, this, that, and the other. Let me make sure that if I'm paying for what I want. Like, I wouldn't go into a restaurant and ask them to bring me a steak and they bring me a hot dog. Or a, or a spam burger. Yeah, and I would eat it and say, well, I know that's not what I wanted, yeah. what my money is paying for, or what I wanted, but if that's what my money is paying for, I guess I'll eat it. And, and unfortunately, like I said, uh, you guys can go back and look at our early videos and you're going to see me just irate getting, you know, asking and putting people on the spot. I mean... Uh, politically, I'm a, a pariah in the city that I live in, but people that want to know the truth and want to know what happens, they know, come and ask me. Right. Because I know where all the dead bodies are. So you can make a difference in your community, but you've got to get active and understand who you're voting for. What I do on a lot of my shows, especially my political shows that we're, I'm going to do on this show because we're getting ready to get into it. I go and get public documents and I put it up on, okay. on, these, on these candidates. And I, I'll tell you right now, we have a, a congressman, his name is Mark Chicano. Every time he comes into town from Washington, his chief of staff contacts me and lets me know where he's going to be meeting at, what he was doing in Washington, and what he's been doing for the district. And I, and I report that uh, to my neighbors. But that only happens because you're very influential. Not just influential, but you're active in the Absolutely. neighborhood. You're not just one of those people... Well, you see me every four years. Yeah, right? why they building something over there? We don't right. want it, but you know what are we going to do right. now? Right. You're actually out there saying, hey, I'm going to hold you accountable mm -hmm. if you're not doing what you say right. you're going to do. So the next time we, we go to the polls, I'm going to make sure people know who you really are. And that's what everybody should, should be, be doing. doing. Right. In fact, um, I was talking to my daughter yesterday. I keep pointing over there because she's, she's behind, behind the curtain. <laughs> um, I was talking to my daughter, and she says, well, you keep talking about forming a, a, a political party mm -hmm. uh, for black people. Yes. Why don't you just do it? And so I went home, and I did some research. And so you know, a lot of red tape. Mm -hmm. But I said, at the very least, without having to um, do it legally right now, mm -hmm. we can at least start Smart. forming something. Start the same. Forming and growing. Right, okay. It, it, whatever party is out there, as black people collectively, we are going to vote for this because this better serves black people. Wait, wait, wait. People. Don't we already have that? The NAACP does that for us. Well, they tell us to vote Democrat. Yeah, of course. Democrat. And, yeah. and we know that a lot of times. And then they'll give us things to say, go talk to this no, person about that. No, no. See, we need to get away from this two-party system. As you always talk always about the two-party system of, it's not working. I, I'm saying this, and, but, and I'm saying this, but we're both doing this. We just, you know, we got y'all so wrapped up and into the thing is parties. When, and the thing is, when you are when you're awake and you see what is going on, right. and you really see it, you say, "Wow, this is really messed up." Because in a democracy, there should just be two parties. Right. We should well, have I, I don't, I don't belong to any party. I'm neither proud to I. say that. Neither and my do daughter I. keeps saying, "How many times are you going to tell us that?" Yes, neither that do you I. don't belong to a party, nonpartisan. But it's, both parties have to cater to you. Exactly. To and if, why don't people understand that? Go nonpartisan, right? Mm -hmm. And actually hold them accountable. Like they've been texting my phone off mm -hmm. the hook and calling me yesterday, especially. And so my blanket response to them is, okay, like Gavin Newsom, who's running for governor out here, their people text me. I said, great. What is Gavin Newsom doing for, uh, to help black people um, shorten the wealth gap? To clo uh, actually close the wealth gap. <laughs> well, no, they, they text me back <laughs> and said, you know, gave me his blanket answer. Oh, Gavin sure. Newsom is this and he's that and he's doing this and he's sure. creating jobs. I said, again, you gave me the blanket 